Welcome. Happy Easter. Okay, that was pretty good. <laughs> Maybe out there. Oh, let me get the gist of this. Good morning. My name is Cecilia Fleming, and I'm the board member of the day today. And I'm happy to see all your wonderful faces. I have a couple of announcements. And excellent, you got it? Okay. Um, we're having a challenge with the restroom. So the men's restroom is open. It is for male and female. If you have a friend, have them stay outside. Otherwise, always knock before you go in. So the women's restroom is not to be used and the outside restroom can't be used. You can use the men's, and if you need privacy, you go back into the minister's office. There's a private bathroom in there, or over to the annex, okay? So there's three ways today. Men's restroom, minister's office, or the annex, okay? So if you have your phone, and you have it on airplane mode, please know if you have an alarm, it will still go off. <laughs> I learned that the hard way up here one time. So please check your phone. Oh yes, masks. This is um, an open room. If you see someone with a mask, please ask if you can have any of a hug or approach them in any way. Uh, I don't seem to see any masks, but if you do have a mask on, where's the, where's the, where's the uh, please observe that privacy and uh, the distance for that, all right? So have a wonderful service and uh, happy Easter. The Christ candle is lit. Yes, it's lit. It's not lighted. It's lit. <laughs> Welcome to Unity of Mason. My name is Reverend Mindy Tucker, and I serve as co-minister here. And it's my honor to welcome you into this Easter experience. We are so happy that we are so happy. We are so happy <laughs> that you have chosen to seek your spiritual support and your spiritual nourishment and your spiritual inspiration here with us this beautiful, beautiful day, whether you're in person or online. We begin our time together with a moment of prayer, tuning in to our own divine spirit, to our own Christ light that shines within, knowing that it is this light that rekindles our desire to live. It rekindles our desire to express our love, our joy, our peace. And it is this light within that invites us into a new understanding of what is possible for us what our potential is in the world and how we are empowered, enlightened, and energized to move into our true nature. So it is, and so we let it be. Unity is a worldwide movement that builds consciousness. It's a consciousness of love, joy, and peace. We build this consciousness one heart at a time. Certainly, it's a consciousness that it begins in the heart of God, but from the heart of God to your heart. From the heart of God to your heart and to your heart, we soon have a community of hearts beating as one 
knowing that there's only love, joy, and peace for us to experience in our lifetimes. We do this by having amazing Sunday experiences. We do this by having amazing healing services during the week or a series from time to time. Joining me on the platform right now is Reverend Nikki Golden. She's the other co-minister and she's delivering the lesson. We have Kyle Larson on the piano. We have Jackson Tyler as our vocalist. Marianne Schweitz comes up and supports us with the vocals. And and did I forget anybody? No, Cecilia, Cecilia you met. Today. Okay. And you guys. And you guys, you're here. Thank you. We have a five-week healing service series that started last week. They are not building blocks. They're standalone. So it's not like you have to do homework in order to come to the second one. <laughs> but the second one is happening this Tuesday at 7. Yes, it is. And Darlene Moore, and I saw her walk in. Darlene, would you stand up so people can see you? There she Way is. Way in the back. She's an amazing Reiki, Reiki healer, and she is going to, to invite us to tune into our own capacity to have that energetic healing experience. Yes, and then on Friday night, we have yoga. It's called Hey Yoga Healing Experience Yoga. I probably I missed the E. Healing Emphasis, Emphasis Yoga. Thank you. We could do lots of ease there. It's an empowering <laughs> yoga because it enlightening. makes you feel good. It's enlightening. It's oh, energizing. It's okay, but that's every Friday. We want you to know that every Friday at 6.15 and then every Saturday at 10, we have Qigong. And both of those are over in our annex building. And then on Tuesday mornings, we have a Sangha that is totally online. And it's beautiful. I've been once, because Tuesday is actually my day off, so I try and to take my day off. But it's beautiful. There's wonderful experience of sharing there. So if you're touched, moved, or inspired, please attend one of these. And you can find out the link for that on the website. All right, I'm inviting you to stand. We are going to sing Resurrect Your Soul, written by Christy Snow. Dun, 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 dun. Oh, no, wait, Kyle's going to play. <laughs> I, I'm really sure. They are really sure. <laughs> I love Easter Sundays. This is just lovely, everybody. Glad to be here and with everybody online too. This is Miss Katie, and she loves to lead our affirmations, so she's all ready to go ahead and do that right now. My heart is always open to newness of life. Say it with me. My heart is always open to newness of life. Okay, thank you.
We have just one announcement today. After the service, I hope that you'll join the children in the garden, just out through these doors here. Uh, there'll be refreshments, there'll be Easter bunny, and an egg hunt and some craft activities for the kids. So I hope you'll come along and support them and just enjoy the joy. So we hope to see you there in um, a little bit. Let's bless the children. They're not going anywhere today. They're staying in here with us. This is an intergenerational service. We like to be together every now and then. Um, but we're going to bless them anyway. So let's go ahead and do that. Children, we love you. We bless you, we appreciate you, and we behold the Christ you are. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes. We have a special treat. Our uni teens have a little poem to share. So I'd like to invite the uni teens up here. They're going, oh, no. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> Okay, excuse me, <laughs> I'll find where I have to stand. I wanted to preface this. They've got their backs to you for a reason. They're not being rude. Um, <laughs> They want to share a poem that was written by a young man about their age. And the poem is about, um, well, I won't say, but it's called The Turnaround Poem, and you'll see why in a minute. So let's go ahead. When do I start? Our generation will be known for nothing. Never will anybody say, we were the peak of mankind. That is wrong. Our truth is... The, the truth is our generation was a failure. Thinking that we act, actually succeeded is a waste. And we know living only for money and power is the way to go. Being loving, respectful, and kind is a dumb thing to do. Forgetting about that time will not be easy, but we will try. Changing our world for the better is something we never did. Giving up was how we handled our problems. Working hard was a joke. We knew that people thought we couldn't come back. That might be true unless we turned things around. Unless we turn things around, um, oh, okay, yeah. uh, uh, unless we turn things around, that might be true. People thought we couldn't come back. We knew that was a joke. Working hard was how we handled our problems. Giving up is something we, we never did. Changing our world for the better will not be easy, but we will try. Forgetting about the time is a, is a dumb thing to do. Being loving, respectful, and kind, kind is the way to go. Living only for money and power is a waste. And we actually succeeded thinking that our generation was a failure. That is wrong. The truth is we were the peak of mankind. Never will anybody say our generation will be known for nothing. <laughs> Thank you, uni teens. They're wonderful. You can go have a seat and relax now. Enjoy the rest of the service. Thanks, everyone. Birds flying high. You know how I feel. Sun in the sky, you know how I feel. Breeze drifting on by, you know how I feel. It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. And I'm feeling. It's 
It's a new dawn, it's a new day, it's a new life for me. of life. Our attention is, when we bring our attention to something, we're bringing our love to something. When we bring our attention to something, we're bringing our awareness to something. And so today, as we celebrate Easter, we bring our attention to that new beginning. What new beginning would you like to have in your life today, in this moment? Take a breath. <laughs> Take a breath. What new beginning would you like to have in your life today? It can be. You can make that decision in this moment that that new beginning can occur. And it can be with ease. It can be with joy. It can come forth from your heart. All we ever have to do is make the decision to have the new beginning. There's a lot that goes on in Easter. We look at the celebration of the rising of the Christ within us at Easter. Many 
people and myself growing up, I was taught that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I really struggled with that as a kid. As a matter of fact, I got in trouble a lot because I would ask, what did I ever do or anybody that I ever knew do so that Jesus would need to die on the cross for my sins? And, and I struggled with that and I questioned that and I asked a lot of questions in Sunday school and I got told, be quiet, basically. But for the, a lot of my life, Growing up, I chased that question's answer until I came into unity. And when I came into the unity movement, it was around 2005, I found the answer to that question. The reason Jesus died on the cross had nothing to do with our sins. I might startle some of you. And I might celebrate some of you from that. Amen. I heard amen. Jesus did not die for our sins. The purpose of Jesus' life was not to die on the cross. That's how I was taught, but that's not the purpose of Jesus' life. The purpose of Jesus' life was to teach us, to model for us, to show us the way, to show us who we could be, to show us the fascination of life, the joy of life, the peace that's available to us in life. You make today. Jesus died on the cross because Jesus was teaching. In that day and time, an intercessor, a go-between, was needed to talk to God. And Jesus was teaching, the Father and I are one. We don't need somebody else. That was radical. The Sanhedrin of the day were making the laws, and they wanted people to go to the temple priest to make the intercession to God, to make the prayer to God. And why did they want that? Because the temple priests made money for doing so. And the Sanhedrin got a portion of that. And so the power structure was changing. The power structure was changing. And so Jesus' death had nothing to do with our sins. Jesus' death had something to do with teaching us how to live. And how do you want to live? How do you want to live? My choice is to spend 99.99999% of my time in joy. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I spend a lot of time in joy. My wish for each and every one of you is that you spend 99.99999% of your time in joy also. And if you really want to want it, go for 100%. Do it. Go for 100%. One of the phrases that Jesus often used was, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Ben, would you put that up there, please? It comes from the Gospel of John. I am the way, the truth, and the life. What happens in Easter is that Easter is that awakening and the rising of spiritual consciousness of the I am in us. That's one of the metaphysical definitions. Easter is that awakening and rising up to spiritual consciousness. I would like to say it's clarifying who we are and what we are so that we may live in our spiritual consciousness, so that we can truly live in our I am, so we can truly be both human and divine and embrace both, not decide, oh, my human part is really awful. I want to live over here in my divinity, but to really embrace the, all the parts of us. And so from this, this statement that Jesus made, I am the truth, I am the way, the truth, and the life, that comes some of the radicalness of the, the day. Ben, would you change the slide, please? I really want you to see it as I talk about this. I am the way, the truth, and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. So think about it. If you are in a culture that says you have to have an intercessor, you have to go to the priest, the priest has to go to God for you, and here's this being, this person, this man, who's coming through teaching you, you don't have to do that anymore. You can go to God yourself. You can pray to God in this moment. You can say hello and be present with yourself. You can pray to the heavens and know that God is both imminent and transcendent, and you can be present and in relationship with God yourself. But here's this culture that says, no way. This is the radicalness of Jesus. This is the radicalness. Being the way, we must be having difficulties. <laughs> Being the way, thank you. <laughs> Being the way means we're, there is a way that the door is opening, and Jesus was that open door through Jesus' behavior through his modeling the behavior, through healing, through being teaching. Jesus was a mystic, and he was different than his time. Have you ever felt different in your life, different from the people who are around you? I have. Sometimes it's really uncomfortable, and sometimes it only takes one other person to say, well, I don't think that way. It rises up within us some feeling of, oh, maybe there's something wrong with me. And yet the message of Jesus is you're perfectly right, exactly as you are right now. You're in that right place that you are. You're unfolding in perfection. And we don't always believe that, but we're unfolding in perfection. Life is the curriculum that we have created for it. We are truly our destiny, as we sang about a little bit. Ago. We are our destiny. And from that, we know that we can create the world we want. And it begins with us. It begins with our choices. It begins with how we show up. It begins with how we are the way and how we begin living the way. Ben, could you make the slide? So the, whoops, sorry. The spiritual law in us that opens up the door or the way of spiritual illumination and, and understanding is that piece of the scripture from John that says, I am the way. Say that with me. I am the way. I'm opening my spiritual illumination. I'm open to my spiritual illumination. And to my un spiritual understanding. And my spiritual understanding. So we're opening up to that spiritual illumination and understanding. We do it in relationship with each other. Sometimes there's conflict in the relationship. We're still opening to spiritual understanding. What's my part? What's your part? How do we come together? How do we have compassion with each other even when we're different? How do we be together? and be different and yet be uniquely individualized expressions of God. That's the paradox that we live with in every moment. How do I do that? So oftentimes when somebody's different, we decide they're right or they're wrong. And whichever they are, we're the opposite. And yet we're opening to a third way. Jesus was really about learning how to be the third way. The word compassion in the Hebrew text actually has two meanings. One is that compassion of the womb of the woman who births the child. We have compassion for our children. The other is the compassion of a brother. The other meaning of the word compassion is compassion for a brother. That's my brother, and I care about my brother. That, and it, it's Hebrew, so it's going to say the brother, but we can also add on, that's my sister, and I care about my sister. And in these days, that's my androgynous friend, and I care about my androgynous friend. That's, you know, or my non-binary friend. We can open that up, but really what it's saying to us is, I am connected to that person. I am connected deeply to that person. I may not see the cord that's flowing between myself and another person, but there is a connection. There's an energetic connection that's flowing between me and you, and you and me, and you and everyone else. And so as Jesus was teaching, Jesus is inviting us to recognize that connection, to see it, 
even when it seems invisible to us, to feel it, even when we can't feel it. Have you ever been so mad at somebody you loved, you just was like, oh. And yet, there's love. There's still love, even then that uh, feeling. There's love. We don't want to get rid of uh, we want to make it the 90 seconds that it exists in our brains. 90 seconds from the moment of stimulus to the response is what happens in our brain. Let's not have it be more than that. And yet let's honor the oh, because something has happened in us that has changed our feeling state. And we can embrace the feeling state with love and come out on the other side and say, hmm. Mm, opens up the channels of the brain for wonder. Mm, I wonder what I can learn from this experience. When I feel frustrated, when I feel sad, when I feel scared, what can I learn from this experience? And this is what Jesus was teaching. Go and sin no more. Sin is simply that sense of separation from God or the sense of separation from our own inner awareness of God within us or a sense of separation between us as individuals. And the moment we can recognize whether we're in a state of anger or we're in a state of joy, we are still connected to that individual. And that connection is deeper than any emotional sine wave or frequency. The connection will always be deeper. And when we begin to be aware of that connection, then we are truly living Easter, that rising up of the Christ within us, that resurrection, the renewing, the reseeking of what is occurring in our lives. And we can do that from a place of love. So, I am the way, the truth. Spiritual truth is our affirmation of our oneness with God, which brings us into that recognition of our divine nature, that recognition of our connectedness to each other, that recognition that we are one. We are one with God. And because we are all divine in nature, we are one with each other. Sometimes that's not so easy when that oneness with somebody else is somebody I don't particularly like. But Carl Jung would simply say to us, hey, that's just a part of yourself that you're not liking. So instead of making it separate from you, what if you embraced it? What if you embraced it? And what if you learned how to love it so that the next time somebody was different from you or had a different thought or a different idea, you went, hmm, I wonder what I could learn from this. I wonder how this could be. The way, the truth, and the life. Life is that energy that brings all forms to action. Life is what animates us. Life is what brings us vigor and vitality. It's the expression of our being that manifests as animation, activity, and vigor. Without life force energy moving through our bodies, we would be dead. <laughs> Just flat out dead. That's what would happen. So each morning when I wake up, I am so happy to wake up. And I'm so happy to feel that life force energy within me. And I try to tune in and reach down, way down deep into the earth, and bring up the starlight that's living in the earth and bring it up through my body all the way to the top of my head and up. And then I try to reach up and open up my crown chakra and I bring water. I like water personally because we're basically 90% water anyway. But I like water and bring it down through my crown chakra to bathe every cell of my body and to move down into the earth so that I have this flow from earth to the heavens and from the heavens to earth that's moving through my body so I can feel that life force energy. I can feel the movement. And then as water, because water bathes all our cells, and I imagine my cells are sparklings. <laughs> and this is part of how I create joy in my own life. 99.99996. We can use the active imagination that we are to bring forth life and life all the time. Would you put the next slide up, Ben, please? So, 
Charles Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity, says the first step in realization of life is always to know that God is life. Say it with me. God, God is, is life. God is within me. God is within me. Therefore, I am life. Therefore, I am life. And you guys are sitting here so beautifully radiating life that we know that you are life. And we want to know that God is life, abundant, omnipresent, eternal, and within us. And the second step is to make positive connection with God life with the God life that is within us by declaring our oneness within it. I am one with God. Would you say that with me? I am one with God. So we're inviting the movement of spirit within us. We're inviting ourselves to live as fully as we possibly can. The teachings of Jesus invite us to let go of what's no longer serving us. To see the divinity of ourselves as well as the humanity of ourselves. To learn how to love all of us. Not just one part of us, but all of us. All of the parts of ourselves. Jesus was inviting us to know that we are one. And then in that oneness, we can connect with each other from a state of oneness. Now that doesn't mean we're always going to like somebody. That's our humanness. But in the not liking of somebody, we can still love them. Because love is a frequency. It's not an emotion. We've probably been taught that it's emotion, but it's a frequency. And so we can move into our heart. And this is from Eric Butterworth. We can move into our heart. And we can imagine the love that's in our heart. So tune into your heart for a moment. And if it helps, put your hand on your heart. Tune in for your, to your heart space for a moment and see if you can feel your heart opening up. See if you can feel the love that's in your heart. This is why, you often, why we often see what, they, what are called prayer hands. When we hold our thumbs next to our heart chakra, it automatically begins that opening. Feel it. See if you can feel it. And if you're not feeling it, see if you can generate it. Think of someone you love beyond the shadow of the doubt. And notice what happens. Notice what happens. Can you help? I can't help but smiling when I think about people I love. So I know that my heart is smiling. And one of my favorite meditations is called the um, Meditation on Twin Hearts for Planetary Peace. It's its long name. I usually call it Twin Hearts. But one of the statements is there in that is focus on your heart chakra and smile at the world from your heart chakra. Smile at the world. So when I'm struggling with somebody, when I'm having a hard time with myself, I come down into my heart chakra and I think about the words of that meditation, smile from your heart chakra. So I smile, I generate that feeling of love, that feeling of blessing. It's an energetic form. And love is the universal healer. It's the universal harmonizer. So as I begin to do that, I can bring myself to that new beginning from frustration to joy. That's simply a new beginning, to move from frustration to joy, from fear to peace, from sadness to compassion. All of those are simply new beginnings. And they're, I think, wonderful new beginnings. And it's a recognition of who we are and what we have within us. And it's a recognition of how to use principles from within so that we can create our destiny, because we are that destiny. I want to tell you a story about Easter. And it comes from a different faith. It's Christian in nature, but it has a different focus. So there was a young woman. She was 16 years old. Her name was Edie. And she grew up in a family with her two sisters. One was older and one was younger. And their father had passed away about five years prior to this experience. And she and her mom and her sisters went to church every Sunday. This was 1946, to give you a little bit of a recognition. Some of you may not have any idea. I wasn't born in 1946, 
but I have seen some movies that depict it. Some of them not even, I don't know. But I've seen some movies and some images and read some books that were set in that time. And, you know, I used to watch the Waltons all the time, so <laughs> that might give you a clue. But Edie and her sisters and her mom would walk to church every Sunday. It was about a mile. And they had walked together and they would sing because it was about a mile and the mom was wanting to occupy her daughters. And they got to church and it was Easter, or excuse me, it was about a month from Easter. And they got to church and they went through the service and at, toward the end, the pastor, the minister said to the congregation, I'd like to, on Easter Sunday, I'd like to give you some information and on Easter Sunday, I would like to take a regular offering and then after that regular offering, I want to take what I'm going to call a sacrificial offering. And that was their terminology for it, a sacrificial offering. Well, the kids got excited about the possibility of being able to serve in this way. And the reason given by the minister was the sacrificial offering is for a poor family in our church. And the kids were so excited because they felt like they had a delightful life and that together they worked well together and they played well together and they enjoyed their life. And so they went home and at, at dinner time they were talking about what they could do and they made some serious plans. They made some plans to eat, remember this is 1946, eat potatoes for a month because they could buy a big bag of potatoes for not very much money. They decided that they would go to their neighbors and ask if can we do any yard work? Can we do any house cleaning for you? What can we do for you that will earn us some money because this is something we're doing for our church because we're supporting a family who is in need, who is poor. And so they're very excited and they're doing this. And they're even making, um, you might remember, I used to do this as a kid, making pot holders from those. And so they had worked together and they're very excited about what they were doing. And there was just joy because when you're excited about something that's outside of yourself, a goal that you're meeting and you're noticing how you're getting to that goal, there's a joy that comes up. There's a satisfaction that comes up. And so this is what's going on in your family. Every night's lively as they're talking about things. Well, it's close to Easter by this time. And so the three girls go to the grocery store and they ask the manager, would you please change our change into bills? And so they come away with three very crisp $20 bills and a $10 bill. Now remember, this is 1946, so this is a lot of money. They have created $70. So the next morning, they're headed to church. They're walking to church. They're so excited to be in church. And the time for that offering, that special offering comes by. And they proudly, each one puts a bill, the mother and the three daughters, each one puts a bill into the offering plate. And they go home, and they're talking about it, and they're still feeling the joy of their accomplishment. And the minister drives up, and he the mother goes out to talk to him in the yard, and, and he stays a few minutes, and then he leaves. And the mom comes in, and she sets an envelope down on the table. And in that envelope is $87. And this slow, dawning recognition comes to Evie. We're that poor family. It changed the atmosphere. That perception of how someone else saw them changed their atmosphere. It changed her thinking. She went to school the next week and she was looking at people wondering, do you think I'm poor? How do you see me? And it was hard for her. And then and the next Sunday, she didn't want to go to church. But the mom said, no, we need to go to church anyway. So the mom and the daughters start heading to church. They're walking their mile. And the mom tries singing, but nobody else would sing. And so she gave it up. The mom and the girls get into church. And there's a guest speaker. And the guest speaker is 
talking, he's a missionary and he's talking about working in another country and he's inviting the congregation to give money so that they can support somebody else who doesn't have as much money. And so she's very, very excited. Um, the Edie is very excited and she looks at her sisters, you know how when you talk to each other with just your eyes, she looks at her sisters and she looks at her mom and when the offering plate comes by, they pick the envelope, the mom picks the envelope out of her purse, hands it to the one daughter, hands it to the next daughter, hands it to the next daughter, and drops it in the plate. And before the Sunday is over, they count the money. And there's a hundred dollars. And all of a sudden, there's this dawning, there's this new beginning that happens for Edie and her family. We're the rich family in the church. We are the rich family in the church. And the story she tells is that for the rest of her life, she felt abundant. For the rest of her life, she felt rich. Because in that moment, she began to realize that somebody else's perception of her had no power over her. That she had behaved in the way that Jesus had taught. She had learned to give. She had learned service. She had learned compassion. And her behavior taught her who she was. That is Easter. That is Easter. Our own perception of ourselves based on our consciousness is Easter. It's that rising up of the Christ self within us, our divine and human nature that's willing to look around us and say, how can I help? How can I be of service? How can I love? How can I feel as deeply as I feel and love the wholeness of myself? That was the, the message. To stand up. To know that there are times that are going to be difficult because life can be difficult at times. And I have within me the teachings, the knowledge, and the willingness, and the ability to apply those teachings so that I create my destiny. I create the new beginning in every moment. What will you choose this Easter Sunday? Will you choose the new beginning? Will you choose to step forward and create what you want in life? It's up to you. And what a joy that it's up to us. Because when it's up to us, we have the control. We can no longer say, oh, they're making me do this. I'm choosing. Say that. I'm choosing. My hope for you is that you're always choosing to know the perfection of you. And that you're always choosing to know the love that you are. We're going to see our way into meditation this morning. I invite you, we don't usually do this, but I'm going to invite you to stand if you're able. And if you're not, that's okay, but stand as we sing together, flow through me.
different words than someone else. And love that part of yourself that might have felt awkward. Maybe you were feeling this the flow of the spirit and it didn't matter what anybody else was seeing around you. Love that part of yourself. Let yourself find your fullness no matter whatever is going on around you. Let it be. Let it be that flow of spirit so that you can stay in peace in every moment. And that you can know that you are loved. You are loved. You are loved. You are loving. You are loved. And breathing into that knowingness of who and what we are. That knowingness of our oneness with God. Our oneness with each other. Knowingness that we were taught to love, to be loved. And that we were called to be on this planet at this time. For whatever reason, that we have a holy purpose. And that our very presence in life, our very presence I am one with God, and so are you, and I celebrate all of you, and I celebrate myself today, just the way we are. I love you, and I love me. Yay. We come to that time in the service where we love our church, <laughs> <laughs> and so it's time for our offertory, and there are many ways in which to give. We are, 
yes, we are passing the buckets today as well, but there's online, there's Banco, there's text, and there's mail. And I'm glad you're in person. You're a big support for me today. So um, whatever way that you wish to do that, and if you are a, um, a regular giver and you're already giving online or whatever, but you want to put something in the basket, there's, Tamara, you got one of those? No. Okay, there it is. No. <laughs> the back of the chairs, you'll find those, and just put that in there with a prayer and... Uh, Thank you very much for your faithful service. Divine love flowing through me blesses and multiplies all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive, and so it is. Sunset blows on my mindset. I can't deny they're getting high, higher than my income. Incomes, breadcrumbs. I've been trying to survive. The glow that the sun gets right around sunset helps me realize this is just a journey. Drop your worries. You're gonna turn out fine. Oh, you turn out fine. Fine, oh, it's turned out fine. But you gotta keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head down, hey. You gotta keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head down, hey. I know it's hard, no, it's hard to remember sometimes. But you gotta keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head down, hey. Hands in my pockets, kicking these rocks. It's kind of hard to watch this life go by. Buying in the skeptics, skeptics mess with the confidence in my eyes. I'm seeing all the angles starts to get tangled. I start to compromise my life and my purpose. Is it all worth it? Am I gonna turn out fine? Oh, turn out fine. You gotta keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head down, hey. You gotta keep your head up, oh, and you can let your head down, hey. I know it's hard, no, it's hard to remember sometimes, but you gotta keep your head up, oh, you can let your head down, hey. Only rainbows after rain, the sun will always come again, and it's a circle, circling. Around again, it comes around again. I said, Only rainbows after rain, the sun will always come again. And it's a circle, circling around again. It comes around, but you gotta keep your head up. Oh, you can let your head down. Hey, you gotta keep your head up. Oh, and you can let your head down. Hey, I know it's hard, no, it's hard to remember sometimes, but you gotta keep your head up. Oh, Keep your head down, keep your head up, and you can let your head down. Keep your head up, and you can let your head down. Keep your head up, and you can let your head down. I said no. With all this energy, all this love, all this appreciation, all this joy, all this recommitment to a new beginning, we say and bless the offering that you have so generously shared with Unity of Mesa. We are one with the opulence of God. We are now in the flow of infinite abundance. And we give thanks for the prosperity that is ours by divine right. 